Isaiah chapter 46, 1 Corinthians being the 46th book of the Bible, Corinthians was a carnal church. And one of the things that Paul had to deal with them is, was meat being offered to idols. That was the one of the main things, you know, should I eat meat that has been given to an idol? Well, we're still on idolatry. Last night, I, like I said, chapter 45, I was thinking about afterwards, is the book of Romans. Well, Rome, what do you think of? Think of idolatry. Paul walks up and he says, I see your idol. I, I, see, yeah, I see your idol. It's a statue dedicated to the unknown God. Bell, bow it down. These are false gods who had images, who had statues. Of Babylon, Nebo stupid. How do they bow down? Their their idols were upon the beast, upon the cattle. Your carriage, your carriages were heavy loaded. They are a burden to the weary beast. Now here's the event. That they're carrying these idols around upon animals. These are gods that can't walk. Now, where I come from, and probably happened in other places, but it was a since we had a uh, Catholic newspaper. Every year there was this feast. You know, they would carry Mary through the, the streets of New London. Everyone would be pasting money to her, and by the end of the day, they'll take this picture. Here is Mary, beautiful with dollar bills and money posted all to her. Well. No disregard to the mother of Jesus, but to the Mary of the Roman Catholics, why can't she walk herself? Why are the gods in India, why are they on carts? I am told that there's this god that's an elephant-like kind of creature kind of thing, and it rolls down the streets, and I'm told that women throw their babies to this god. What kind of god is that? Why can't he walk? And when you read Psalms, it says, mouth they can't speak, eyes they cannot see, hands they cannot handle. And it's reported two or three times, or verily, verily. Now you got the animals involved. They're carrying these gods around. They stoop. They bow down together, the animals. You know that's an imitation of Jesus Christ? Where do you find that? It says cattle, the beast, the beast of burden. Well, that would be a donkey, an ass. What God rode upon an ass? Jesus Christ. Into Jerusalem. But Jesus Christ got on the ass himself and got off the ass himself and walked. They stooped, they bowed down together, they could not deliver the burden. Great gods. They're so great, the animal is under a burden, it's too much to carry them. And God can't do nothing about it, he can't lighten himself. But themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, God saying, O house of Jacob, and all the raiment of the house of Israel. So he's speaking to them about these idolatries. This is the present condition of Judah. We are born by me, which excuse me, which are born by me from the belly. Uh oh. God ordained Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes of Israel even before. It is recorded in the book of Hebrews, I believe, that Levi paid tithes of Abraham's. Uh, uh, bowels. Well, Levi was the great, trying to figure this out, great, great, great grandson of Abraham. Abraham did not have Levi, he had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had Levi, which are carried from the womb. 
which the responsibility here you would get, there are certain people, if not all, that are born and they're of God. Judas was born for a particular reason. It says in scriptures, I have raised up Pharaoh for a reason. Jesus was born for a reason. John the Baptist was born for a reason. I believe everyone that is born has a reason. And the very first person thing that, that person is to do today in the church age, a command, a will of God, thou shalt believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the first will of God for anybody today. Pilate had a will from the somebody had to declare him innocent three times and still have him crucified. That's beyond justice. Imagine going to a courtroom. There's somebody standing there. And today, you walk in a courtroom, you some courtrooms you can go to. And that judge says four, three, four times, uh, you're not guilty at all. And then he sentences him to go to jail for 40 years or whatever. And even to your old age, I am he, the elderly. Even to whore hairs, white, gray hairs, will I carry you? Wait a minute. We just read about God's being carried. God flips it around and says, I will carry you. What's that, 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 that poem about the footsteps in the sand? There it is. You don't carry God. God carries you. I have made you verse 3 and I will bear God is like to a mother gives birth to somebody and holds them and carries them when they can't walk and even still when you get a child that, that can't walk you know he's really tired or even walking around, and you got to pick him up and carry him that's what God's liking it to you guys are burying this wood and, and stone and metal, but I can bear you. Jesus said, those that are full of burdens, come to me, I'll give you rest. You're heavy laden. That's right out of chapter 46 of Isaiah. I will help you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry, that's God speaking, and will deliver you to where you need to go. To whom will you liken me? A man, elephant, a bird, a snake, a dragon, some weird thing? I've been looking up pictures from when we do the the uploads of, of YouTube and uh, uh, the sermon cloud and looking up pictures, you know, to find, you know, make it a little more interesting. And it's amazing when you look up God's images or idols in the search engine, and then you look up their images and you see all the different kind of beings that are made. I mean, you ever see a, you ever see a true totem pole? That thing is just creepy. That's the kind of god you want. It's creepy looking. There's just some wooden gods and all that. They're just creepy. <clears throat> Who will you liken me? God says, and make me equal. There were no Polaroids. No one drew a picture. You know, it's amazing. No one drew a picture of Jesus. Not one picture has survived of what Jesus looked like. And yet, you can go anywhere. And somebody who's trying to make a profit, I mean, as in money, the Bible and Jesus and all that, you got these images and all that of Jesus. And there are suckers out there who buy that stuff and... That's not what he looks like. And compare me that we may be uh, that we may be like. Now, 
that we may be like. A lot of these images and gods and idols are made not for the representation of God, but I like it. You know, I like it is the foundation of sin. Music. Well, I like it. Perverted Bible. I like it. A particular church. I like it. A particular man. I like him. They lavish gold out of the bag. Judas held the bag. And weigh silver in the balance. A particular amount of silver. And hire a goldsmith. That's what uh, what's his name did in the book of Judges. His money, his mother's money is stolen. She curses it. He comes up and says, "Hi, mom, I stole your money." Oh, thank you, dear. And takes takes some of it and goes to a founder and makes a graven image of it. And then he he starts the first Catholic Church of the Bible. He gets his own priest. He gets his own wardrobe, and he's got his idol out of money that was stolen from mama. And he, the cop, I mean the goldsmith, maketh and maketh it a god. That goldsmith is a sinner, for all have sinned and come the short of glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. He makes a god. Wait a minute, gods are supposed to be holy. You can't have a holy God made by a sinning or an unholy person or creator. Man was made holy. It was man that, that fell. They fall down. That means worship. Because it says, yea, they worship. And the perfect example for that is the Christmas tree. It's a God. You're always bowing down to that thing until, you know, December 25th. When you bow down to get all the gifts which are not of God. They bear him upon the shoulder. They're carrying him. Now, the Israelites carried the ark, but that wasn't God. The Philistines thought it was God. That was just an idol, uh, item of illustration God used for Israel, but it wasn't God. They carry him. They set him in his place. So when you go to the altar of a Catholic church, the host, their God, has a particular place where it belongs because they carry it, they hold it up. And they have a door that they can, you know, they can close the door on their God and control the God. You know, when a sports event happens and something great happens, they take that one guy and they all lift him up and carry him back into, into the, the locker room. They're carrying him. They set him in his place. He has a particular place. And he standeth. Poor God he can't sit down. Man, I, I, I'm working on my feet all night long. And it's like I can't wait. Can't wait to get in the car and sit down. From his place shall he not remove. He ain't going nowhere unless they pick him back up. You can take an image or an item, put them somewhere and if you die the only way that image or that idol is going to be picked up when somebody comes in from the family or something grabs it and brings it down to the theft shop or whatever and that God if he ends up in the threat shop he can't even have a po enough power to redeem himself or walk out of the store yea one shall cry unto him. That doesn't mean boo-hoo. That means talk, plead, maybe boo-hoo. Help me. I'm in trouble, Mr. God. Help me. 
Oh, give me blessings. Yet, can he, the, the, the God, not answer, nor save him out of his trouble? There, are, again, listen, I grew up Roman Catholic, third generation from Poland. Strictest of strictest of Catholics. Those idols, those images, those beads, those, those religious relics, aids of worship, are their salvation. If you upset one of them gods, you are in trouble. You had to, you know, have Mary outside, and you had to clean her and keep her well and all that. Why can't Mary wash her own self? If you've got to wash somebody, now listen, uh, this is this is no insult, okay? There are people who are born with with deficiencies. There are people who are born that. You know, they're just lacking a chemical or something like that, and they need to be taken care of. That that's perfectly fine. That's understandable. Nothing wrong with them. But if you got a God that you have to bathe, He can't bathe Himself. That is a retard God, and I'm not calling people who have deficiencies retards. I call that just a basis of a fact of life for them. But for these gods that you have to pick up, you got to do something for them. These gods are retards. And if I've insulted you, I don't care as far as God worship. Now, if you can't take care of yourself and all that, I don't mean no disrespect to you. Whether you had an accident, whether it was by birth, whatever it is. You can't control that. I'm talking about here is something that man has made and this thing can't do nothing. At all. You know, sometimes during the, the Christmas season, some of these Christmas trees, they catch on fire. What kind of God is it that can't put himself out? The fact is that 12 Christmas trees were during the, this season burned down. If Jeremiah says it's a God. Jeremiah says it's an idol. If it is a God and an idol, why can't he? Oh, my, I got fire on myself. Put myself out. He's got water sitting at his feet, and he doesn't use it to put the fire out. Dagon fell down. Dagon couldn't get back up. Twice. What was that king we read in Isaiah? He goes, and he's praying before his wooden god, what kind of god he's got. And the god doesn't say, hey, look behind you. Your sons are going to kill you. Zanacharyph. Isn't that a nice God? Here comes two people who want to kill you. You're, you're faithfully worshiping. And he doesn't say, hey, turn around. You know? Can't save him out of his trouble. Remember this. What about Pharaoh? Every one of those attacks, the darkness, the, the water, the blood, the fraud, those were all gods of Egypt. And not one of them gods helped. Matter of fact, a couple of those gods, the darkness, well, there was darkness to Egypt, but there was light to Israel. Now, isn't that a... They can't save them. That's all through the Bible. Remember this. Remember this. And what does remember mean? Pay attention. And show yourselves men. Ooh. What's the implication? If I say be a man, what? Either you're a wimp or you're acting like a woman. There's all news today about that pervert and all that. He's not being a man. Bring it again to mind. Oh, ye transgressors. Well, look at that. What's the charge? Transgressing. Job 38, 5 and 40, verse 7. You better call this to mind. What? It's in the law. It's the second commandment. 
We've been talking about two or three chapters. It's going to show up in Corinthians in the church age. Shall we eat to things offered to idols? Remember the former things of old. For I am God. Remember the things that God has done. And there is none else. That's over and over. Since we've gotten into the chapter number that matches Matthew in the New Testament. Alright. Watch this. I'm going to kick another religion as I always do. Who became in Matthew? Mark. Luke. John. Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, that may not be in order. All the way to Revelation. Who is the main character? Jesus Christ. Alright? We're talking to Israel. We're talking to Judah. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Now, there are some Jehovah Witnesses out there. Or, uh, no, I'm with, no, because we read last night that the Jehovah Witnesses are Jews, okay? There's an organization out there, call themselves Jehovah Witness, and yet deny that Jesus Christ is God. And we find in chapter 46, which is the 1 Corinthians, a New Testament book, we find something. We found it last night. We found it since we've hit... Chapter 40 of Isaiah. We found something recorded. I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Do you know what Paul says to the Corinthians? I believe, I forget which second or first, but you know what Paul says in chapter 11? There's another Jesus. And God just said, I am God, there is none else. I am God, and there is none else. And we have seen over and over in these chapters that Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. What's another Jesus? Well, there's a Jesus that came to North America in Salt Lake City. That's not God. There's a Jesus who's not God right down the road a couple blocks. That's not God. There's a Jesus in a church behind the priest that is still nailed to the cross. Even though we, we celebrate Easter, that's not the holiday. And resurrection, and yet he's still nailed to the cross. That's not Jesus of the Bible. There's a Jesus, a, a, a hippie Jesus. That's not Jesus of the Bible. There are a bunch of Mexican children who are named Jesus, which means Jesus. That's not, God said, all these people that have a Jesus, I am God. You better have the biblical sound Jesus that is a Jew, John chapter 1, who was born of a virgin. Alexander the Great claims that his mother was a God and he was a virgin born. That is found throughout mythology in Babylon. Tammuz is supposed to be a, a, a virgin born of his own mother, which is a wife and all that other kind of nonsense. But God says, I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. And the whole reference has been to idolatry and imagery. You can't make God out of a pitcher or an idol. When we get to heaven, when we die, or even the rapture, we will be quite surprised what Jesus will look like. I didn't blind it, so please forgive me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Can you do that? I'll tell you what, you think you're so smart? You tell me the day you're born. The day that you're born, you tell me what day you're going to die and what hour. 
You can't even speak. Yet when Jesus Christ was born, he can tell you what day he was going to die. He can tell you what year he was going to die. And he could tell you exactly what time he was going to die. And he could tell you where he was going to die, how he was going to die, who was going to be there when he was going to die, who put him to death when he died. And he could tell you all the things. Even before he was born. Can you do that? Now, if you can do that, or if your wooden, your stone, or your uh, metal thing can do that, then it's God. You know how many prophecies there were just on the death, location, and the events? The fact is that one of the things was that he's going to be on the cross and they're going to shoot dice or whatever for his clothes. That they're going to look narrowly upon him whom they pierced. Even his words upon the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, meaning, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's quoted in the psalm. Can you do that? I don't think so. So I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none else. I have no idea when I'm going to die. Or I don't even know if I'm going to be raptured. I hope I'm raptured, but I don't know. I can't even tell you how I'm going to die. I can't tell you where I'm going to die. I have no idea. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Prophecy. That's the difference between God and God's. Saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will me, do all my pleasure. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. Buddha couldn't say that. Muhammad couldn't say that. Any pope can't say that. Joe Smith couldn't say that. Jehovah Witnesses couldn't even get the the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ right. Four times I believe they missed it. I will do all my pleasure. What did the Bible say? For joy he set himself to the cross? Something like that. That pleasure is a prophecy of Jesus going to Calvary right there as we're talking about it calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executed my counsel from a far country that's an interesting word there far country that's Babylon that was in the parables of Jesus as as God the Father Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. So what God says is going to happen. What? No, wait a minute. Hold it. Gold, uh, gold, silver, metal, wood, stone. Gods don't talk. God speaks. And what God speaks is going to happen. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. You are, transgressors, verse 8, you are far from righteousness in this idolatry. You're nowhere near it. I bring near my righteousness, God's righteousness. It shall not be far off. It walk among them. He sat among them. He spoke among them. And thy salvation, there's the Lord Jesus Christ, thy, or mine, I can't see, sorry. That's, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, God's salvation. Shall not tarry. Seems like he's tarrying, but he's not. God has his perfect proper time. 
I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory so there's that 